Shalom. We return to our Hebrew alphabet, letter by letter, with two new letters today. Don't forget to click the link for your font chart. Our letter for today, our first letter for today, is the Pe. You will see it right after the Ayin. It's one of the ones that has a final form. You're going to see two forms under the number 80. The one we're looking at is the one on the right. And the picture meaning of this letter is mouth. If you look at it, maybe you can see the picture of the little uvula, the little thing that hangs back in the back of your throat. Now this letter has two different pronunciations. Altogether in the alphabet, there are three letters that might have a change of pronunciation varying upon whether this dot is in them or not. This dot is called the dogish, and a dogish can appear in almost any letter under different circumstances different grammatical rules. However, it only changes the pronunciation in three of the letters, including this pe. So the one on the right with the dot in it is pronounced p, 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 like p. The one on the left is pronounced f, like our f. A dogish never changes the meaning of a word. It simply is going to change the pronunciation. You can think of the one inside this letter pe as a little pill. It's a p pill. It stops the air. Our second letter for today is hey. And you see it has two parts, and there's a space between the part. That space is going to be crucial for distinguishing it from other letters. The number value is 5, and the picture meaning is like hey, or maybe just the breath. So together, these two letters spell two different words. Now, we're not learning vowels, so you can just remember this. The first pronunciation is, has an O sound, po. Po means here, like in this place. Genesis 19, 12. And the meds said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. In Job 38:11 and said, Hitherto, up until here, shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. The other word made by this combination of two letters is pe, and this is the word for mouth. What's interesting about this letter is that it appears in words that have two different kinds of meanings. In the column on the right, you see words that have to do with separation or dividing. And if we look at the face, the mouth is where the face actually divides. And so these words are related to opening or dividing, and they all have the pay in them. The words in the left-hand column have to do with breathing, which is another function of the mouth. We use it for breathing. We see the pay. Now, in the wor two words for pant there, the pay is at the end. It's a final pay. We will learn it. We'll cover it in another lesson. But just to note that this critical idea of mouth and breathing, this letter appears in all these words. So, speaking of the mouth literally, Genesis 4:11, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Genesis 8:11. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Nua knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Numbers 26.10, again, the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. In Psalm 11.10, I am Jehovah thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Now in this case, in the King James, this word pe is translated as eat. Genesis 25.28, And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. But the word there is pe. So we see two even better translations. The NASB says because he had a taste for game, it was in his mouth, or even the Young's literal. His hunting, as Esau's hunting, was in Isaac's mouth. It kind of gives us a clue to the maybe superficiality of Isaac, who 
who was unaware of the promise made to Rebecca about which twin would be the stronger or the one that would carry the name. And Isaac is just going to give his blessing to his firstborn, but really the promise is with the secondborn. And Isaac was not able to see that. He was kind of living after his flesh. Some other translations for this word peh, Genesis 25, 41. And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh. What came out of Pharaoh's mouth? A commandment. And gave them provision for the way. In Exodus 12, 14. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Another use we see often is for the edge of the sword. If you think about the function of the sword, it's going to cut something open. Exodus 17:14. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Psalm 149:6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. As far as the idea of there being a lot of people, 2 Kings 10.21 And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full, from one end to the other, from one mouth on one side to another mouth on the other side. Again from the idea of an opening, Psalm 133.2 It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Other functions of the mouth. Psalm 119, 131. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Psalm 126, 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the heathen, Yehovah hath done great things for them. Psalm 33, 6. By the word of Jehovah were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Song of Songs 1-2 Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is sweeter than wine. I want to take just a moment and touch on a grammar concept. You almost never see the word for mouth, peh, written peh he. It's usually written peh yud, and it's pronounced p. If you have seen the video on the jots and tittles, you know that a yud at the end of the word can be a possessive pronoun for mine. So the word specifically, p, means my mouth. There is also something to express general possession in Hebrew, which is called the construct state. And so by switching out the yud for the he, this also indicates the mouth of so previously it said Pharaoh's commandment, we would see P par O. It's not pe P, the mouth of Pharaoh. Sometime in the future you can learn more about that, and this is your initiation into the construct state. But if you are looking in your Hebrew Bible, if you're looking for the word pe, pe he, you won't find it often. It mostly appears as this pe yud. One time more. The earth will open its mouth, Revelation 12:16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Here is a memory verse, Psalm 51, verse 17. I'll read it. I will read it again slowly, translating each word, and then I will read it again. Adonai, Svatai, Tiftach. Ufi Yagid Tehila Techa. So we have three pays in this sentence. None of them has the dogish, and they're all going to be pronounced with a an F sound. Adonai. Lord, the name of the Lord, substitute, my God. Svatai. This is not easy. We're not used to saying F after S. Sva. Svatai. Svatai. My lips, tiftach, tiftach, you will open, ufi, and my mouth, yagid, will tell, 
Tehilatecha, your praise. Adonai, Svatai, Tiftach, Ufi, Yagid, Tehilatecha. I encourage you to keep studying, to learn all your letters. Studying the Bible in Hebrew is very valuable. Until the next lesson, Tasimit Ha'inayim, Al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.